Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are learning the fundamental concepts of testing. We are in chapter three talking about the test types and the test levels and uh, we are still continuing with our 3.1 which is the functional test levels. And today we'll be talking about another functional levels of testing which is acceptance testing and trying to understand how exactly this final level can help us with the testing practices. Now, today in order to talk about acceptance testing, first of all, we would like to do a key differentiation between UAT, that is user acceptance testing and acceptance testing. Now, of course, a lot of people do understand that acceptance testing is similar to user acceptance testing. It's just that it is it's all the matter of the way you pronounce it, the way you call it out. But the, there's a slight difference if you talk about user acceptance testing and acceptance testing. The point here is that who is performing the acceptance test? Not necessarily if you talk about the traditional days, not necessarily the test will be performed by the real users. Sometimes it does happen that the tests are performed by the customer, but the customer is not the real users at the end of the day. So again, a new word to differentiate between is the customer and the end user. Are they always same? The answer is not necessarily. Sometimes they are same, but most of the time they could be different as well. For an example, a very real time example to understand this differentiation is if I have a bank which is XYZ bank and the bank is placing an order with ABC development company for the product called as ATM software, which is the automated teller machine as a product. Now, of course, we do understand that the ABC is a development company which will be developing the product for XYZ bank, but the bank being a customer will not be the end user because end user will be common people who are the customers to the bank right? And they can be again anyone. Of course, one of the development company employees also their end user or even bank employees are their end users. But it is not something which is meant for the bank to use privately within the bank premises. This will be deployed outside and any type of end user will be using it. So now in this case, we pretty much understand that customer is not always the end user. Now, the question comes as, where's the differentiation between user acceptance and acceptance? So when the customer performs the acceptance testing, we just call it as acceptance because they are trying to accept the product which they placed with you as a set of requirement. And today they know what exactly their requirements are from the product and they are trying to run the test in order to accept it before moving it to the production. The second part is, when we give it to the real users. Of course, as a part of acceptance testing, you can perform that, but customers also further give it to their real users to listen from them, understand from them that if they are happy with the product, if there are anything which they could have missed out in the implementation, or there are any defects which the real users can find is all what we call it as user acceptance testing. So if in case the customer is itself the end user, that means they're trying to build an application to be used by their internal employees, then the level of testing will be called as user acceptance testing. Because here the acceptance is done by the end users itself, which is equivalent to the customer. So small thin line differentiation between user acceptance and acceptance is that when the customer does it, acceptance, and when the end user does it, it is user acceptance and sometimes customers can be the end user. Now let's come to the pretty much definition of what exactly acceptance testing is all about. So acceptance testing is a level of testing which is performed by the consumer or the end users in order to accept the product. The project begin with a set of instructions, set of requirements which was given by the consumer or the customer at the beginning of the project. And they gave you a kind of outline, theoretical written requirements where we didn't have any vision, any kind of visibility that what exactly the product will look like. But given that the customer is the person who knows what exactly is the product expectations, they will perform a round of testing to cross check that is every single functionality is working as expected. 
Of course, your QA team, being a test engineer yourself, you would have performed all necessary tests to adhere to the requirements. But it might be possible that you might have also missed some of the defects or some of the implementations. Because we are an external organization to the customer and we may have miscommunications or communication gaps in terms of misunderstanding the requirement. So this is where a customer always performs a level of testing before accepting the product. Now a very simple example to relate it is when you look forward to buy a product for your house. Be it a small printer or you're talking about a refrigerator or maybe an air conditioner or anything else, right? You go to the store, though you know it comes from a brand like Samsung, LG, Sony, or Apple, right? But you do try the product out. Does that mean you don't trust Apple? Does that mean you don't trust Samsung? Of course, you know the Samsung team, the Apple team, would have tested it thoroughly before sending it to the market. There is a testing team behind the screen doing all the necessary tests before pushing the product to the market. But the point is, you being the customer, you being the consumer who's going to make the payment for that product have to test, right? The same way the customer will review the product or test the product before accepting it, saying that, yeah, this is what I wanted and it is working fine and I'll accept it. So acceptance testing is done at two levels alpha testing and beta testing. A lot of people understand that alpha testing is all about, uh, you know, customer performing the test, but a lot of people do not understand what's the need of beta testing. Though you know that there are beta versions, which you have tried out yourself, but what's the reason or objective behind that? So let's understand what is alpha testing, which is the first level of acceptance, where customers perform the necessary test at the developer's premises. That means the company which is developing and you invite your customers to come to your premises to conduct the acceptance testing. Which means, in simple terms, the development or test environment which you have prepared, which will be tested here. So again, talking from a traditional approach, you literally used to invite the set of team members to come and join you at your premises and perform the necessary test. But today this can be done online because servers can be hosted you know, hosting your application and you can give a link to the customer and they can test it from anywhere, right? So alpha testing had the objective of acceptance of the product, which can happen at multiple level. That is functional acceptance, operational acceptance, contractual acceptance or regulatory acceptance, whatever criteria they had, they will test everything in order to accept it. When this particular alpha testing level passes, right? The customer accepts the product. They accept it that, okay, this is my product now and I'll take it to my production. So they will push it to the production and make it available to some of their real users or sometime all of their real users. Depending on the type of the product, you can take that decision. And then begins the beta testing. The second level of acceptance testing is called as beta testing where in case the customer is not the end user, okay? Or sometimes customer is the end user, but we want everyone to use within our organization to understand and come up with any kind of ideas. So beta testing is done with an objective of collecting feedback from the real users. Again, taking the example of ATM software, we were talking about what exactly could be the possibility that a customer would have missed an expectation from the end user. Right? Given that XYZ Bank is thinking from a financial background, ABC Development Organization is thinking from the technical background, but real users can be from any other background too. So sometimes these different perceptions can help you to identify potential problems. For example, Windows 8. Windows 8 was a very good example to understand that beta testing is so helpful, where end users told them that it has compatibility issues and some of our applications are not able to install on that. If it is getting installed, it is not doing the intended functionality. So this is where beta testing is very crucial, where we give the product to the real end users and ask them to work on it, and the only objective is to collect the feedback. The duration of beta testing would be ranging between three months to six months of time, depending on the size of the application. If in case anything is identified during beta testing, it will be 
you know, considered as a set of requirements. If it is a defect, then the development company will fix it and roll it out to the production. Once the beta period gets over, you roll out the release of the product to the market. So this is where acceptance testing talks about how exactly the product is finally accepted by the customer and necessary tests are performed to make sure that the product can go into the market. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be looking forward to understand more about what happens before acceptance in terms of non-functional testing in our upcoming tutorials. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this video. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.